So 2023 has been an interesting year for me, not only because I ditched my mouse for programming, but also because I switched over to this bad boy. Now, if you've seen keywords before, this probably looks a little bit weird to you, and that's because it is. This is a staggered QWERTY keyboard layout, and the reason why it's called a staggered layout is because if you look at the columns, they are staggered. So this means that if you want to use the keyboard the way it's intended by keeping your hands on the home row as much as possible, in order to reach some keys, you have to do some weird finger contortioning just to reach them. And honestly, this is just very uncomfortable. And honestly, it's this uncomfortable feeling that has kept me from actually learning how to use a keyboard properly. What I used to do for the longest time is just move my fingers to a different position, essentially moving my fingers around to a new home row, this will make it easier for me to actually reach some of these special keys. And God forbid that I have to use the back key or one of those special key characters, because I don't know about you, but my fingers just can't reach that far while staying on home row. This on the other hand is a custom open source keyboard called the Lily 58 Pro, and it has an ortholinear staggered layout. You'll notice that for every single column, each key is directly on top of one another, and the last few columns are staggered, making it easy for your pinkies to reach those buttons. And this has been a huge game changer for me because typing has now become a lot more enjoyable and super comfortable, which as a side note, it means that now I'm actually able to reach over 100 words per minute in some cases. Now, I will say the adoption for this keyboard took quite a bit. I built it back in the middle of 2022 and for the next six months, I didn't touch it just because it was really slow for me to actually use it. But as time went on, I just kept on using it and slowly I just started building up speed with it. And so compared to the first keyboard, you might have also noticed that this one is a lot smaller. So where are all the other keys? So this is where I want to introduce the concept of layers. So on your standard keyboard, you have the shift key, for example. And by pressing that shift key, you get access to a bunch of other symbols that wouldn't be there otherwise. So the same concept applies to my keyboard, but I have a lot more of them. So on my thumb keys, I have two of them that let me access different layers. And also by holding down the escape key on my keyboard, I have another layer that lets me use my keyboard as a mouse. Now, the reason this is possible is because of my custom keyboard. I not only get to decide the hardware I use, but also the software. On my keyboard, I use a custom firmware called ZMK and ZMK gives me the ability to remap any of my keys and even extend the functionality of my keyboard. And one of the coolest things about doing this on the firmware level is that I can take my keyboard over to any computer and instantly have access to those features on any computer. Okay, so how does this all work? Well, because the Lily 58 is an open source keyboard, all of the files that you need to build this thing are actually freely available on GitHub. It's really just a matter of buying all the parts and putting everything together. Now, before you go out and buy all these parts, First, it's important to determine what firmware you want to use. You can even go as far as building your own here, but two of the most popular ones are ZMK and QMK. They both offer similar features, but in my opinion, QMK is a little more mature because it has been around the longest. Now, the reason it's important to determine what firmware you want to use first is not only because different firmwares have different features, but also because they support different chipsets. I personally opted out for using the ZMK firmware using a nice nano board because the nice nano supports Bluetooth, which is an awesome some luxury to have on a custom keyboard. So for the parts, what I did is first, I actually downloaded the PCB available on the GitHub website for the Lily 58 Pro, and then uploaded that file over to a PCB manufacturer, which was then able to make the PCBs for me and ship them out to me. And then I just bought all of the other parts listed on the GitHub website, wherever I can find them. If you want to know my specific configuration with all of the parts that I bought to build my keyboard, I'll have it listed down in the description below. Now, alternatively, because this is such a popular hobby, you'll actually find web websites that sell you entire kits with everything that you need to build your keyboard, usually excluding the soldering iron. And you can even find services out there that will build a keyboard for you so that you don't have to do anything. But in my opinion, I think it's just cooler to build your own. And if you haven't done this sort of thing before, you gain the experience of learning something new, which I think is always a good thing. Now, after you've built your keyboard, it's just a matter of flashing software onto the boards themselves. And for that, you can follow instructions for the firmware you want to use. The cool part that comes next is actually configuring your keyboard exactly how you want it. Configuration can be done in a few ways. There's actually GUI applications that you can use which make the whole process a lot easier, but I personally prefer to write my own config files. And honestly, it's not that hard as long as you follow the instructions for the firmware you want to use. My config file has actually undergone a lot of changes. And then eventually I just realized that I really liked the default config. So I went back to the default config and added things onto it. Because of this, a lot of my config mirrors the default ZMK config for the Lily 58, but I do have the mask layer I spoke about 
about before. The way that mouse layer works is I have my config to press and hold the escape key and then use Vim-like key bindings to move around my mouse. So in my configuration file, I have sets to press and hold the escape key and then use H, J, K, or L to move left, down, up, or right, depending on what I wanna do. And then by pressing the escape key, I can press Y, U, I, or O to scroll. So yeah, not much to say other than this keyboard has been pretty awesome. And after using it for a while, I really don't wanna go back to anything else. One thing I do wanna try, however, is using different keyboard layouts like Colmec or Dvorak. This keyboard layout puts the most used keys in the English language on the home row, making it a more efficient typing experience because your fingers have to travel less away from the home row to reach common words. The one concern that I do have by using alternative keyboard layouts is not being able to go back to a keyboard that uses standard QWERTY keyboard layouts. For example, if I'm using a different computer that might not be mine. So because of that, I put off learning alternative keyboard layouts for now. So if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and I'll see you the next time. Peace.